Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Robin Craig Live. I am broadcasting from Houston, Texas, where we are so excited to get a little bit of rain today. We had that terrible drought all summer long, and I am so grateful that I'm not having to water the plants right now because we've gotten just enough rain to keep me from having to do that job. And um, I'm wondering if you guys are doing okay. You know, I've been communicating with different people on the phone and on the social media sites, and a lot of people kind of have the blues right now, and it's, uh, I think, in part because it's winter and when the weather's cold and you can't get outside and the sun's not shining bright it kind of works against us but that's what's so great about tuning in to Robin Craig Live because this is the place where the Sun always shines I had a moment this morning that was kind of strange and I wanted to share it with you you may have seen my post on uh, Facebook but this morning I was doing some typing and I typed that my husband had died in 2006 and I did something for a moment and then I went back and I thought did he die in 2005 or 2006 and I literally had to go back at something else that I had posted in the past to see that he in fact had died in 2005 and that's the first time that I hadn't been able to remember the date and it kind of freaked me out and I thought wow the brain is so strange how it works and it's so odd how grief works because it's like so in your face and it's like you will never forget any of the dates it's like they're tattooed on your brain but somehow over time things start to happen and the pain becomes less and then you struggle to remember the date I mean it's really crazy so if you find yourself dealing with something like that don't think that you're crazy and don't feel guilty just know that that is the norm so tonight I'm excited because one of my favorite people Natalie Ryan Ramirez who is the founder of Wise Widowed Parents is going to be my guest and I'm gonna be calling her in just a moment but first it's time for the critter update now you guys I'm telling you I was so happy this week because I heard nothing in my attic I was thrilled I thought that's great nothing is in the attic however three nights ago my cat you guys know Indigo Sherry I heard that terrible sound that a cat makes when it's in a cat fight but I, it woke me up in the night and I thought she's an inside cat the dog doors blocked she can't get out nothing can get in is she having a spasm? Is she having an attack? What's up with her? Because it was that rare, that terribly loud sound. So I got up, I came inside, she was by the front door. So I flipped on the light and there was this great big black cat sitting outside staring at her as if to taunt her. So when it saw me and the lights came on, it went away. So I go back to bed, I fall asleep. And then a little bit later, the same thing happens. So I come back in, this time she's at the sunroom by the sliding door, and I saw the big black cat. The moon was shining, so I could see it without turning on any lights. And I thought, you know what, this is not working for me. I really need to get my rest. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if my possum tactics will work on the cat. I barked at it, and I barked loud, like I'm a big, bad, vicious Rottweiler. The cat left, it ran away, and I've heard nothing since. So I want to recommend to everybody that's dealing with unwanted animals of any sort, just bark. It's working for me. So <laughs> tonight, you know I'm going to be giving away another case of beanitos. Here they are. Tonight I'm holding up the plain black bean flavor because they are so good. I really, really love the black bean flavor. The chipotle barbecue is great. The plain ones are great, especially with some guacamole or salsa. So I'm going to be giving away a case of these a little bit later in the show, so stick around for that. And last week's winner is Frida Masio in Indiana. And Frida, I'm glad that you're here, honey. You're in the chat room, so I'm delighted to announce that you are going to be getting a case of Benitos. And I'm kind of crafty because I Facebooked her today and just quietly asked for her address. She provided it without questions, and I placed the order. So just be watching because you're going to get a case. If you get the small bags, there are 24 in a case. If you get the big bags, there are nine, and they're so good. So when you get them, be sure and send me a note on Facebook and let me know what you thought. So I'm tickled pink about that. 
Uh, all right, so now I am going to get Miss Natalie on the phone. And um, yeah, the chips are going great, guys. I'm excited. Scott, you're here. I'm excited to see you. And Melanie is here. Julia is here. Nyla is here. Terry is here. Diane with Widow's Ring is here. Oh my goodness, you guys are just making my heart sing. Benito's on the show and he took a picture of them and put them on my Facebook site and he really enjoyed them a lot. They're so good. And if you haven't won any yet, you can still buy them. You can get them at beanitos.com, B-E-A-N-I-T-O-S.com. You can get them at Whole Foods. You can get them at some health food stores, a lot of grocery stores. So just ask around and you will find them. And there is Sherry. Honey, I'm glad you're here. She said she was working late and may join us later in the show, but she's right here at the very beginning. I'm so excited. It's just absolutely great. Okay, so let's get Natalie on the phone and give her a little shout out, see what's going on in her neck of the woods. Thank you for saying that, Sherry. I look forward to Tuesdays because you guys are here. Hello, Robin. Well, hello, Natalie. How are you, honey? I can hear you loud and clear. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. This is such a hoot because normally on Tuesday, my children and I, we go to the San Diego Hospice version. It's called Grief Street, you know, and so they have a wonderful program for, you know, the parents and the children. So this is the first time I'm watching all the dialogue going on. And you said, don't watch it, so I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> but it's so funny. What a hoot. I hope you're getting paid for advertising on for Benito's well, you know, Benito's knows I'm their biggest fan, and I am praying that they're coming on as my official chip sponsor of the show because I have sold thousands of Benito's because I love them so much and because they've got no uh, corn, they're gluten-free, they've got protein, they've got omegas, they're low glycemic. You can eat them without feeling guilty. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So it's just uh, wonderful. So we're going to see who wins tonight. Were you enjoying the dialogue in the chat room, Natalie? I, I am. It's, it's, it's so it's great. I love, I'm a big color person, so I love seeing all the different colors. You know, it's kind of like the rainbow, and I'm all about color. So it's like, oh, wow, that is just and just so you know, when you have time and you're able to log in early, I try to log on 20 to 35 minutes before the show so that everybody knows I'm here, number one, and we have a chance to catch up. And then after the show, I stick around and we just keep the dialogue going. So it's super. It's really great. How so. Fun. Yeah, I'm excited. So Natalie, you have founded Wise Widowed Parents. And um, I, I wanted to, but before we get started with what you do, I wanted to bring up something. I want us to talk about this for a moment. We all know that social media has changed so many things. And I saw an article that was put out by the BBC News that said legislation is now being considered in Nebraska and other states regarding social media. Several states across the U.S. are considering legislation that would give personal representatives legal possession of Facebook profiles, Twitter accounts, and other online information after a death. But privacy experts argue that such legislation, which has already been passed in the state of Oklahoma, needs further clarification before being made into a law. Meanwhile, some families who have lost their loved ones claim that the online accounts of the deceased are upsetting to them as it reminds them of their losses. There was a woman in Nebraska who had a video that was attached to this article, said that she lost her beautiful sister years ago, but she's reminded of the loss every single time she clicks onto Facebook. And she's got a brother who says that he won't even log on anymore because he just can't bear to see the photographs. So the family really just want to keep the page there, but be allowed to make it private so that they can look at it when they want to and they're up to it. So Natalie, what do you think about that? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting that you even bring that up and I have to just let you know, I can barely hear you, but I got the gist of what you had just said. Okay. But I actually chose to keep Willie's uh, Facebook page up because he chose to be cremated. And 
Um, he was all about celebration and living out life, you know, to the fullest. And when we had his celebration of life gathering 13 months after his death, because I just could not do it with two small children and everything, it was just like, oh, I need some time here to regroup to get in that celebrative mode. Um, we ended up putting quite the, the celebration together, and we did a lot of video montages. We did like 14 songs, and we broke them up into groups. Okay. So that is on his web page, too. So you could see, or not web page, his uh, Facebook page. So you can go in, and you can see different kinds of his life. Um, so mm -hmm. I like it. I, I'm glad that, you know, it's there, and I think it's beautiful. It's like a living memorial. Yes. In, in essence of just, you know, letting people review his life because he lived a very full life. So it's really fun, and I think it gives a lot to your heart as well, you know, as you watch it. Well, and you know, another thing that all of us should think about is before the legislation is in place, we all should let our family members or, or leave, leave it with your attorney somehow your password and your login information. Because with that, your family can control the site. So it's just one of those things that social media has now brought up, and we seriously have to really think about that, because one guy said that, you know how friends are always suggested, and he said he has a relative who died years ago, but this relative's picture keeps popping up, and it says, would you like to be his friend? So, you know, it's just one of those things. But anyhow, I thought that was interesting, and uh, I wanted to mention that today. So, Natalie, you've been a widow almost three years. Your husband died in April of 2009, and you were left with a son and a daughter. And how old were your children at the time? Um, they were six, or, uh, four and six. My son was four, and my daughter was six. Okay. Okay, so that's difficult. Uh, and he died uh, in a short time, but you knew he was going to die. Yes, I, it's a bittersweet thing, you know, because as I journey through all these support groups, I hear everyone's stories. I don't, I don't know if it's better that it happens, they're living a full life, and, you know, they pass away, or if you get to actually have the opportunity to say your goodbyes. But um, for our family, I feel it was a benefit because um, we got to traverse through those waters with him. Yes. And in the yes. process, it, it was really clear for my children that Daddy was really sick. Um, from the day he was diagnosed, it was seven months. So we were able to be with him and by his side through the whole journey, you know, for seven months. And in that time, the kids could really see and understand that Daddy was sick, Daddy was sick, he's not getting better, oh my goodness, Daddy looks different. And But yet they were able to love on him and have conversations with him, and in turn, he was also able to have that time to say goodbye. So, ouch, you know, it's one of those things. So, but um, we were blessed that we were able to do that. And so when it came time that he did die, the kids, we told them, like, it was the equivalent of the caterpillar, you know, that, you know, when a caterpillar dies or, you know, actually comes back as a butterfly and that daddy was going on to, you know, earn his wings in heaven. And, and that, that, that did it for him. They, they understood wow. that. We saw how sick Wow, that is beautiful because I wanted to talk about how do parents tell their children. But in a way, in your situation, it's really neat because your children were literally able to see that their dad was really sick. And did he specifically speak to them that he might not be around? Um, well, we were always hopeful. I mean, we were in survival mode. Nobody wanted to that he was going to die, you know, yes. I think when you're giving, you know, he's in stage four, and yes. it was pretty aggressive, but everybody always knows for survival, and we're going to beat this, and we're going to beat, you know, he was very healthy, didn't have cancer in the family, so the odds was really good, even though he's in stage four, we thought, yes, if anybody can make this, it's going to be you, honey, you know, we can yes. do this, um, yes. but as far as children, um, so it wasn't until about a total of 20 days when he just finally couldn't do it any longer. And I just said, "That's, honey, I will support you in anything you want. So you just let me know. And he just said, I got to go. I can't do this anymore. So um, we started prepping the children with, you know, daddy's really sick. We don't know what's in store. And then hospice, our local hospice was awesome. They came in and they were the ones that had brought in a book about the, you know, caterpillar and the butterfly. So that really, really helped. 
That is the most wonderful thing, and I never would have thought about something like that. Um, I, I never really would have thought, how do you tell children, and especially when they're small and they don't really understand death so well, but that is fabulous. I'm looking at the chat room, and Julia said that her kids were not there, so she had to just call and tell them, and I see that we have someone new in the chat room who had uh, a girlfriend, uh, a widowed girlfriend, um, she died, so he says that makes him a, a widower. So it's amazing, um, and, and you know, sometimes people want to discount the loss of people who weren't technically married, but a loss is a loss. I, whenever I say that, I think about Oprah. She has been with Stedman for so many years, and I don't think anybody would want to discount the fact that she will feel like a widow if Stedman dies before her. So I, I appreciate you guys making the comments in the chat room. And if you've just joined the show, I'm Robin Craig. This is Robin Craig Live, and I'm speaking with Natalie Ryan Ramirez. And uh, she is the founder of Wise Widowed Parents. And Natalie, what's so amazing to me is that you're not even quite a widow of three years, and you've already got this gangbuster nonprofit to help people. How did that come about? Um, after my husband died, I mean, there's nothing more, it just, it just told you when you have to kiss somebody that you love, at door, you know, death is doorstep, and you yes. have to say goodbye, and you're still remaining. And as beautiful, ironically, and I say that, as beautiful as the transition was, because he really did have a very beautiful passing, um, mm -hmm. it, it just leaves, it left me with, wow, I'm still here. And everything just seemed so bright and vibrant and just, it was, it was bizarre to me. But I had a sense of, why am I still here? And I really had to look at, well, what is it I'm still to do while I'm here? And obvious, having two, you know, obviously having two small children, that was the first clue, right? And I just was like, okay. It took my husband and I 15 years to have these little babies, and we wanted to enjoy them. So I was going to enjoy my life, heck or high water, you know, I was going to figure out how to get through this, and um, that's how it just kind of evolved, and I started going to support groups, and I don't know, 200 support groups later, I'm like, there's still a need here, we need to get back to happily ever after, not that we will ever get to what we had, but we need to get to happy build, there's too much of this sadness, and this is not what we signed up for when we decided to have our children, so um, it just kind of started off from there. Wow, that is absolutely so beautiful because so many people go through their entire lives and really don't find their mission. And sometimes it can be really difficult, but when we go through adversity, it's an opportunity for growth and a time for us to be able to analyze where we are and where we want to be and then how do we get there. So what, what made you want to start a nonprofit called Wise Widowed Parents? Well, what would happen, first of all, when I would go into a lot of these support groups, um, and I said I was a junkie, because if I stay home, I, it, all of a sudden grief and depression just, just haunt me, and it's like I had to get out of the house. And I'm a people person, so that's how I gravitated to so many support groups, and that was my therapy to get through it. And um, in the course of doing that, more than not, a lot of these support groups, there were not widowed parents with surviving children in yes. these groups. Yes. And that in itself was tough because people that were having a hard time, they their kids were grown. And so I was really trying to connect up with other widowed parents because I was determined to find a new new in all of this. And I'm all about solutions. Um, I don't say that I, you know, I'm out there. If it's not there, I'll make it happen. And so out of that frustration of not finding solutions to help me as a widowed parent, not a single parent, but parents and how to not only survive in these grief waters but then take the next step further how do I thrive how do I get back to life how do I get back to happiness I mean these kids are looking at me like mom what are we going to do you know I mean stop crying I mean it's okay mom I mean they're, con they're controlling me it was the cutest hardest thing and I just thought what a blessing and these children just taught me so much so in essence it was lack of a support system for the widowed parent Okay. And um, I had actually found out through working with the children through play, we would play games, we would do wacky 
see that Diane in the chat room said that her grandson was told that his pappy, obviously his dad, was up in the sky with the angels. And one day he found a baseball in the park and his mom asked where he got it. And he said, pappy threw it down to me. Isn't that sweet? Oh, that is so cute and sweet. Thank you for sharing that story. Um, you know, Nyla is just saying that, that kids are such a blessing, and, and they are such a blessing. And I know that uh, a lot of people in the chat room are talking about how their children helped them with their grief. Do you think that your children helped you through the worst part of your grief, Natalie? Oh, absolutely. I always tell people my little, my little babies, they them to replace Willie, so God really knew what he was doing, so he sent them these stupid little souls, and I would say they are the best teachers um, for me, and in the grief journey, I mean, because if you ever watch a child grieve, they they go through it, they will feel it, they will tell you, I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm sad, um, I hurt, I need some loving, and then the next thing you know, like, literally, within five minutes, like, oh, wow, it's funny, mommy, can I go outside and play, and you're like, about it, especially when they're as young as mine, you know, I find, you know, they were just really honest and authentic with their feelings, and I just would look at them in amazement going, wow, you know, that is beautiful, so yes, they taught me to feel the emotion, go through it, reach out, touch somebody, talk about it, and you know what, go on living, we're still here to live, and let's go play, and that's kind of what they taught me, and it was beautiful. I love that. Well, you know, there are parents who are afraid to cry in front of their children. What would you say to them? Oh, I know. I think it's absolutely healthy to cry in front of their children. Um, there's a beautiful connection that takes place. And it, like I said, I would just, I was coached through a lot of these groups and therapists. You know, they said, no, you want to model for them because you've got to remember, you're still here mentoring these little souls. Your mm -hmm. job isn't done. And just because you're outside doesn't mean your hopes and dreams and your responsibilities have died. And so they are looking for you to be the Alpha and the Omega within the home. And so you have to model for them what is healthy and therapeutic. And crying is definitely healthy. And what you do is you just are very honest with your feelings. But, you know, I was also coached, hey, but we're going to get through this, meaning we collectively will get through this and we will find out ways to um, you know bring in happiness back into our life we're going to get through this because we're together so you get that team kind of we're moving through this together I thought it was beautiful I mean the times that they would just kind of heal me it was just beautiful I know I love that so much um, well when it comes to your organization what is the purpose of it what are you striving for with wise widowed parents What are you striving for with your organization? What is its purpose? Oh, the main, what I am so passionate about is creating an atmosphere, and we call it in the form of like it's a three-day family retreat okay. where the families come together and they reconnect because a lot of these families are disconnecting, especially if there's teenagers in the home. Okay. So we're trying to create a space for these families to reconnect. And then in that three-day period, they've also been teamed up with mentors. Each person has been teamed up with mentor buddies that um, based out of hobbies or interests. And so your family of three can grow to a family of six. And through that weekend, yes. we reconnect family members, um, we play, and then we also have our own time. So like on Saturday, there's breakouts for the parents to okay. go, and they can have some of their questions, you know, uh, answered or maybe things that they may need solutions to, but yet at the same time their children are at the camp facility and they're playing and having fun and doing arts and crafts or maybe they're doing a grief exercise. And So my passion is to bring families back together, whether it's in the form of a three-day three you know, retreat, family retreat, or just trying to bring them get together consciously um, to challenge families to um, try new things and just Discovering your new new. So it's, that's, that's the key, is to bring back these families, to help them reconnect. Because ironically, ouch, I have seen a lot of families disconnect. And, and as, as sad as it is, people think, well, no, you should be closer. Oh, no. I'm here to tell you, I've seen a lot of families disconnect, and that's very tragic. 
Um, Natalie, can you speak up just a little bit louder? I know they're having a little bit of trouble hearing you. If you could speak up just a little bit louder. Um, what, what kind of issues do parents typically have with their children once they've lost a parent? You know, that's so different for every family, depending on the ages of the children. Can you hear me better? Yes, uh-huh. Um, so that's kind of hard to speak for, you know, the, the majority of the parents. But for myself, I think the hardest thing for our particular family, because you got to remember my son was four, so he really is missing that male mentoring in his life, whether it's taking him out and playing baseball, yes. whether it's... Um, yes. And ironically, even my daughter, my husband was a very, he was a teddy bear and very physical. He would have tea parties with my daughter. Oh. And so my daughter would start gravitating to men, saying, she would start recruiting men in the grocery store and at the parks to come be our father, you know, the replacement. She would oh. call, she goes, oh, you can come and be our daddy replacement. I like you. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. So that's the challenge with them. My <laughs> goodness. Well, do you think it's important when a child loses a parent, do you think it's important to find other mentors? No one's ever going to replace their father, but did you work at finding male figures that could do some of these things, like playing baseball with your son and so forth? Yes, and you know, it's funny that you should ask that, because in, in taking that concern to my therapist, I said, what do I do? You know, I don't, my daughter's recruiting people. Well, I mean, from the waiters to people in the park, I said, I can't go on. Like, this, this is killing me. <laughs> and she said, well, you know what you might want to do is, is put together a list of qualities that they're missing from their father and what they would like to incorporate back into their life and call it a male mentor wish list. And I used to be in the scrapbooking industry, so I kind of ran with that, and I ended up developing a board. And actually, I'll put it on Wise Widow's Parents uh, Facebook page so people want to see it. And what we did is we each got a section on the board, and we called it a male mentor board. And I explained to the children, nobody ever is going to re replace your father. Yeah. But what we can be real clear about is what we are missing about him and what we would like to incorporate back into our life. And that may come in the form of an uncle. It may come in form of a neighbor. It may come in form of um, somebody we would meet in the future. And it was beautiful. It was absolutely an incredible exercise. It brought laughter back. We did it together as a family. Um, and it is incredible how those qualities have come together and um, through other male mentors in our life. So I just thought it was beautiful, beautiful concept. I love that. I know because it's so hard. You know, because we all know men and women are different, and we do different things with children. So if you lose a mom or a dad, there are things missing from your life that you need to replace in some shape, form, or fashion. So that's fabulous, and it sounds like you've done a wonderful job of coaching your children and guiding them so that they understand the loss as much as any small children can, and that they're thriving. It sounds like you're, you guys are thriving. Yeah, well, you know what, I, like I said, I don't wait for things to happen, Robin. I'm a person that is yes. like, I don't know if I'm stubborn, naive, or what, but it's like, you know what, darn it, we waited to have these babies, and my husband said he wanted me to go out there and live my life to the fullest, find love again, and to mentor these children, and it's like, darn it, I'm going to do that. No, grief and death are not to rob me of my life here, especially with my baby. No, well, I'm not going to concede to that. So I, you know, it's just in that, that drive to just forward and to find solutions and to find that not happily ever after but to just be in that place and space where you're thriving you're growing and i tell people you know what my spouse died but our hopes and dreams have not and i will not let them die these little babies are new souls into this world and it's my job as a parent not only for me to not let go of my hopes and dreams but to help them and mentor to them how do you go about staying connected moving forward so I, I'm not doing a perfect job, but, I, you know, I get out there and I try my hardest, and when yes. I stumble and fall, I just getting up. I mean, I'm not going to lay down and die. I know it, and that
that's a choice that we all have to make because we could lay down and die, but we have to choose to live and we have to choose to create a great life and turn our lemons into lemonade. That's what we do here on Robin Craig Live. The chat room, everybody's just talking up a storm. I want to say hi to Noser. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We've got so many people in the chat room. We've got all of the regulars and Noser just popped in. And I want to take a moment to let people know that I am doing a Valentine's Day party and I'm going to be giving some things away on February the 14th. And I wanted to mention this now because Noser is in the chat room. He has written a wonderful book. He is a fabulous entrepreneur. He's learned a lot of things from the School of Hard Knocks. And he is going to give away a consultation and his book as one of the things I'll be giving away on the show. So that's going to be really exciting. And I've got Starbucks cards and books and all kinds of things to give away. So make sure that you tune in on February the 14th because that's a day when people who have lost a spouse or a significant other are feeling kind of sad. You know, the loss kind of like stabs you in the heart on Valentine's Day. So, Natalie, um, what is your next event with Wise Widowed Parents? I think you said October. to attend the event at no charge is that correct yeah there's no fee for the family i love that i love that i love that uh and also i'm putting up your website it's wisewidowedparents.com yep okay all righty i'm putting that up on the screen right now for everybody to see wisewidowedparents.com that's excellent excellent uh, and i'm speaking to its founder natalie ryan ramirez who is just a bundle of energy and very optimistic and very inspiring because she's not even a widow of three years yet and she's got a thriving nonprofit and really working to help single widowed parents with their children now one thing i loved natalie that you said you do you make everybody turn off their cell phones when they're at camp oh yeah oh no we get back to the basics we're all about no electronics turn off the cell phones um and it's all about communication using your words because it's through using your words that you start to reconnection and um we feel very strong about that and when when people go to camp, what kind of changes do you see in them at the end of the weekend? Oh, Robin, it is the most beautiful experience. If anyone has had an opportunity to go to a family camp, I suspect not too many families because I found there were only five at the time that my husband died, and that's another reason why I wanted to offer this on a larger scale. Yeah. But um, if you've had the opportunity, it is so beautiful because not only are you taking the time to reconnect with your own children, but by the end, you are exhausted because it's very emotional, but you have hope. You have hope, like, yes. we can do this. Yes. And we're together. We're like a team, and we're going to get through this. 
um, but you are walking away with different pool, tools to put in your little toolbox and, you know, kind of getting through all of the grief stuff. Yes. And it just gives you hope. It's kind of like going to Camp Widow. You know how you leave Camp Widow? You're like, you feel so fulfilled, right. but yet you're inspired. You know, you've met new friends. Everybody relates. Yes. I mean, it's awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes. Yes, and you know, sometimes life can be so hard, and when you're trying to function and perform, and you're grieving, and then you're trying to raise your kids, and you're trying to deal with their grief, it's just an awful lot to come at you. So to offer a place where people can go and meet other people in the same situation, and realize, number one, that they're not alone, and number two, that their issues are the same issues that a whole lot of other people are having. And I think there's a lot of comfort in that, and I think it's wonderful for people to share information of what worked for them when they were having problems with their kids. And I read on your site, what did I read on there? That people who, uh, families that have suffered the loss of a parent are more prone to suicide, uh, drug yeah. abuse. Yeah, five more times likely in the children to commit suicide than the parents. You know, and, and as it is, you know, those statistics, even without death, just divorce and other, I mean, really, do we really have to look at this thing? But what's really concerning to me was the 20%, you know, children that are coming from the grief community as they're aging, and if they're not dealing and coping with their grief in a positive, constructive way, then they have a 20% 20, 20 more likely, uh, it, will, it will be 20 more percent likely that they'll have behavioral disorder, you know, where they'll act out. And when you're the full parent, again, not the single parent, the only parent, that is a lot to take on. Yeah. And many times it by maybe three children, four children. I have one gal who's a part of our group, and she has six. And I'm like, how do you do it, girlfriend? And she can't get out to go to the support system. So she loves the fact that we do teleconference calls um, just for the widowed parents. So we have a support group that each month we talk to each other on the phone, like what you're doing, but we cross-talk. Mm. And she's able to do it in, from the comfort of her home in Washington because she wow. can't get out. And, you know, it's hard to find babysitting. And how often do you have the teleconferences? We have them once a month. We're looking to do here um, because a lot of people don't realize this is all volunteer work. Like okay. you, you're so gracious with your time and, and everything that you're doing for the community. This is all volunteer. But what we are looking to do is to try to find um, peer-based support through the Eastern central and pacific regions okay. and then what we want to be able to do is offer start with monthly teleconference calls and then move into we'll just go as what we see we need um, because we want to keep them small we don't want them to be large and we want them to be on the same time zone so again and we usually host our uh, teleconference calls like at 8 30 at night why that's the hardest time in widowhood you put the kids to bed you're sitting there and you're really feeling sad you're looking at an empty bed yes. you know it's just you and your mind starts wandering and you start getting depressed yes. so you know the best thing to do is reach out and touch somebody and talk to somebody who knows this journey i and know the best I thing about it is you can be in your pajamas and you can cry or you can just listen it's, it's great it's a wonderful support system i love it well natalie i don't know if you noticed but gus has just joined us hello gus thank you for being here and uh, Gus is my latest Facebook friend. It's so exciting. And uh, I just love it because they are chatting up a storm. It's so hard for me to even keep up with the dialogue that's going on. But I'm really excited because, Natalie, you're such an inspiration. And you have so much wonderful information. And I love the fact that technology allows us to connect across the nation. It's just like tonight. We've got people from all over the nation watching the show. And we've got some people in Canada and outside of America and that's what technology has done for us I just wonder sometimes when I'm having these conversations how did our forefathers handle loss you know I mean they they, they still had to rub two sticks together to create a fire to make breakfast the next day how did they survive you know did you 
you know, I just, I, I think about one widow who said that her grandmother was widowed three times. That's so hard to imagine. And this girl asked her grandmother, how did you deal with that? And her response was so simple. She said, what choice did I have? So when I look at how we are today, we do have a lot of choices, and there are organizations like yours where people can get together from across the nation and communicate and discuss problems, and more importantly, to discuss solutions. I love the fact that you say you are solution-oriented because we all can name our problems and our issues all day long, but where are the solutions? What do we do to make life better for ourselves and if you have children for your kids? Well, Natalie, what do you do to keep your husband's memory alive with your children? of kindness that you do with your kids, what what all does that consist of and how often do you do it? And do you have a regular schedule or you just get a vibe saying, you know what, we need to remember him today? so beautiful that is so inspiring and what a wonderful thing that you are teaching your kids and I think that's something that every parent whether widowed or not should think about just teaching their children the importance of random acts of kindness I really love that Natalie that's so beautiful well I know that there are a lot of people out there that are newly widowed who would be watching the show tonight who have children what kind of advice would you give a parent who just became widowed and is raising children alone now? Oh, uh, you know, I think the biggest survival, or the thing that helped me to survive, is to get outside of yourself. I know it's hard to find support programs, whether, I mean, especially like in the social media, the chat rooms, but if you go into your local hospices or if you go to our website on uh, wifehoodofparents.com, mm -hmm. we have over 191 resources Okay. Um, I obviously live here in San Diego, so I have, you know, the San Diego hospice has been wonderful. We get a chance to go there every week, 
And yeah, it's a commitment to do it on a school night. But you know what? The alternative, if my kids aren't feeling that their needs are being met on as far as emotionally and dealing with this grief, <laughs> I, I, you know, I can't imagine. I think it's been wonderful. So my advice to the widowed parents is to look for outside support. And there's a lot of resources that will support you free of charge. Um, and people don't realize that. And I think a good place to start is your local hospice. And if you go on our web, like our web page, again, you'll find resources where you can ask us, and we will try to also find resources. Because we also know we have a pretty good network. I've gone to two NEG symposiums at the National Alliance for Grieving Children, and then okay. I've also been to the okay. Foundation Foundation Camp Conference. So we also have a lot of people we have networked with behind the scenes, too. So. Okay, that is so beautiful. I tell you, you are so inspirational. I love what you're doing. And if anyone just tuned in, I'm speaking to Natalie Ryan Ramirez, the founder of Wise Widowed Parents. And they do these wonderful camps to help unite a single widowed parent with the children and to help them figure out how to use their talents and their skills in a positive way to give back. And that's so beautiful. And the next event is coming up in October in San Diego. And you can find out the information or contact the organization by looking it up online. I've got it on the screen right now, Wise Widowed Parents. And it's .com. It's not .org. It's Wise Widowed Parents. Dot com. So, Natalie, do you have any final words that you would like to share with anybody about your organization or about your widowhood or about your children's experience in losing their dad? Um, the only thing I would just say is, again, each of us, even the parents, we all have hopes and dreams. Our spouses have died, but each of us, inside of us, still have these hopes and dreams. Don't let go of them. And if you can really focus, there's a great saying, your mind can only hold one thought at a time. So if you focus on what you don't have, a lack of, guess what? You're going to attract more of that. Who's going to want to hang out with that? Whereas if you try to focus that's on right. blessings, and that's what also helped me in my grief journey, is I would just literally, I'd be on my knees, Robin, sobbing some days. Yes. And re remember, just start counting your blessings. And so I would say, thank you, God, for the carpet under my feet. Thank you. I have a roof over my head. Thank you. And literally, one blessing at a time, I would start counting. So, again, I would share that. You know, when you feel like you can't reach out to somebody or you feel somebody isn't there, start counting the blessings you do have in your life. Because if you're living, that's what you got blessings. You got air to breathe. Start there if you have to. <laughs> you know? um, everybody has blessings. And, and the main thing for everybody is just to reach out for help, and that's hard yeah. to do. And when I was widowed, I didn't know where to reach. Nobody directed me to anything. I wasn't on social media. I did not know about bereavement groups. I knew nothing. So I weathered the storm by myself, and it does not have to be that way. So, Natalie, I hope that you have a successful event in October, and I love the fact that you're doing everything you can to get sponsors and not charge the families who will be coming any fee whatsoever that is so beautiful so i congratulate you and i commend you on the wonderful work you're doing you're excellent and fabulous thank you robin and you too girlfriend you have been doing this for three years and i'm so glad you have a tony tab on it people don't realize that it's about time people don't realize we're doing this it's all volunteer work and you have put a lot of hours and a lot of resources and you know, unfortunately, it, it does take money to kind of make it, you know, go around a little smoother, and so I'm really glad to see that. So I, okay. I know we'll hopefully be able to raise some donations for you as well. Thank you so much, honey. I appreciate your support more than you know, and you have to promise that you'll come back. Absolutely. All right, sweetie, you have a great evening. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Robin. Uh, Bye, everyone. What a hoot. Too fun. Bye-bye. Oh my goodness, she is like the greatest and just so energetic and it's just so sweet and so giving. As a matter of fact, Natalie is donating some Starbucks cards for me to give away on the Valentine's Day show. And as she mentioned, you know, we had a conversation the other day and sometimes people, I don't think, realize how much work goes into 
the show that I do, and I'm in my third year of production here at Robin Craig Live. I am a one girl show, and I literally work 12 hours every single day. If I, I sometimes I have to stop and do a little housework or whatever, but I work 12 hours every day to bring you this show and to find wonderful organizations to turn you on to that can support you in your, your grief process and also to provide some entertainment and to provide some fun, which is what we'll be doing on Valentine's Day. And it takes a tremendous amount of work. So if you want to see Robin Craig stay in production and you want to support the show, just go to my website, Robin Craig Direct. Dot com. There is a donations page and everything is self-explanatory there and uh, any support that you can provide is very, very, very much appreciated. So um, on another note, back to Valentine's Day, it's two weeks from tonight and I'm going to be giving away some really fun stuff on the show and that's a day that just punctuates loss for all of us, but I hope that everybody will certainly make it a point to put that day on your calendar and to not feel sad because we are going to have a Valentine's Day party, you and me. Now, before we close, I saw something the other day that I was sent on uh, or in an email, I should say, and it was so touching, I wanted to read it to you guys. You all know that I am a huge advocate of having a pet of some sort, especially when you live by yourself. And even if you have children, pets give you a different kind of love that is so wonderful and so inviting. And when I saw this, I was so touched by it that I wanted to share it. It's called Freedom and Jeff. Freedom and I have been together 11 years this summer. She came to me as a baby in 1998 with two broken wings. Her left wing doesn't open all the way, even after surgery. It was broken in four places. She's my baby. You're probably wondering what freedom is. Freedom is an eagle. Can you imagine having a pet eagle? It says when Freedom came in, she could not stand and both of her wings were broken. She was emaciated and covered with lice. We made the decision to give her a chance at life, so I took her to the vet's office. From then on, I was reminded that she wasn't doing well and she needed love like everybody else. We had her in a huge dog carrier with the top of it off and it was loaded with shredded newspaper for her to lie in. I used to sit and talk to her, urging her to live, to fight, and she would just lay there looking at me with those big brown eyes. We had to tube feed her for weeks. This went on for four to six weeks, and by then, freedom still could not stand. It got to the point where the decision was made to euthanize her if she was not going to be able to stand on her own. It looked like death was winning, she was going to be put down that Friday, and I was supposed to come in the day before. I didn't want to go because I couldn't bear the thought of her being euthanized, but I went anyway. I felt that I owed it to her. And when I walked in, everybody was grinning ear to ear. I went immediately back to her cage, and there Freedom was, standing on her own. Her big, beautiful wings were spread, and she was ready to live. I was just about in tears by then. That was a very good day. We knew she could never fly, so the director asked me to glove train her, so I got her used to the glove and we started doing education programs for schools in Western Washington. I love that. I'm getting a text. Okay. Um, we wound up in the newspapers, on the radio, and got some TV coverage. Aren't you loving this? In the spring of 2000, I was diagnosed with stage 3 non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I wound up doing eight months of chemo, lost my hair, and missed a lot of work. When I felt good enough, I would take Freedom out for walks. Freedom would also come to me in my dreams and help me fight the cancer. This happened time and time again. Fast forward to November of 2000. The day after Thanksgiving, I went in for my last checkup and I was told that if the cancer was not all gone after eight rounds of chemo, then my last option was a stem cell transplant. Anyway, they did the test and I was told that the cancer was gone. The first thing I did was take the big girl out for a walk. 
It was misty and cold, and we went out front to the top of the hill. I had not said a word to Freedom, but somehow she knew. She looked at me and wrapped both of her wings around me. I could feel them pressing in on my back. I was engulfed in eagle wings. And she touched my nose with her beak and stared into my eyes. And we just stood there like that for I don't know how long. That was a magical moment. And we've been soulmates ever since she came in. I never forget the honor I have of being so close to such a magnificent spirit as freedom. Is that the greatest? You never stop to think that you're going to find an animal or a bird, and especially an eagle, who is so injured that you're thinking you're going to have to put it down. And you're together for such a long time that the animal has an opportunity to give back to you when you're not doing well. Isn't that just so beautiful? I was so happy to find that story. It was so inspirational. And who knows, if you find a little creature out there, maybe a little kitty or a puppy, maybe you need to make friends with it because who knows, it's going to hold you up when you need to be held up. So I love that story, and I love you guys. Now, I want to give away a case of Benitos. Everybody is curious as to what my shirt says. Does anybody have any idea? If you can guess what my shirt says, then you're going to win Benitos. Can anybody read it? Can anybody read my shirt? Any ideas? <laughs> Nala said drunk. No. <laughs> Too many letters for that. Fabulous. Terry, honey, you just won a case of beanie toast. That's exactly what it says. The letters are so big and it goes on forever, but Terry, honey, you figured it out. You're going to get a case of beanie toast. Terry won a book last week. This is unbelievable. It pays to win, and also Frida won some beanie toast. Hers are going to be coming any day. It's so great. I know my hair is in the way, too. Absolutely. I know, it's all about the hair, right? I'm a long-haired dog. <laughs> Terry is on a roll, and I'm going to be giving away a lot of other stuff. So I love you guys so much, and you know how much I appreciate you. And the fact that you tune in to watch the show really means so much, because I've been doing this for a long time, and the show is live. A lot of shows are taped, and the host will tape five shows or more in a day. And then they just play them while they're just off vacationing or reading a book. But I'm here live every single Tuesday, and it means so much to me to be doing this work. Your support is so appreciated. So just go to my website, robincraigdirect.com, click on that donations page for information. And if you have any questions, you know that I'm just right here. You know how to reach me. Please follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And also... Let me know if you have any show ideas, if you would like to be a guest on the show, because I'm doing this show for you, and I do listen. So I love you. I'm going to stick around in the chat room for a few minutes. So don't go away so that we can keep the dialogue going. And uh, once again, I will... I will be giving away the Benitos again next week, along with a lot of other good stuff. So stick around, know how much I love you, and please tell others about the show. A lot of people are hurting and grieving, and they just don't know where to find help. And sometimes it takes a while before you're able to go to a support group. You just don't feel like doing that sometimes right away. But you can watch this show in the comfort of your own home, and your pajamas in bed with your laptop. It's all there is to it. It's a beautiful thing. I love you. Mwah. Big hug, big kiss. And like I said, stick around because I am going to be chatting in the chat room. I'm doing 15 things at once here, so bear with me.